When it comes to hinges, there are lots of options when it comes to how you create the eye, or the entire hinge for that matter. And while I am generally an advocate for doing as much of this as you can by hand at the anvil so that you develop the skills to roll a nice even hinge eye, so that you can then take those skills to any size, any shape hinge that you need to make, sometimes being able to get them done quickly and efficiently means that you can produce a product for sale that you can sell for a lot less and therefore it appeals to a lot broader customer base. And that's the case with these hinges done primarily under the fly press. You can create a perfectly workable hinge entirely cold, there's no hot work at all, just that little bit of cold forming under the fly press to shape the eye. Now I won't leave them like that because as a blacksmith I gotta forge something. But I thought we would take a look at how to make these simple fly press shaped hinges. Now what I'm starting with on these hinges are pre-cut blank. Now a while back we discussed the concept of the craftsmanship of risk, which would be forming the eyes by hand at the anvil, versus the craftsmanship of certainty, which would be using laser cut blanks and using a die under the fly press. Once you get the hang of it, this practically guarantees good results every single time. So this is the craftsmanship of certainty. And sometimes for production work, it's worth moving to that end of the spectrum so that we do get guaranteed results and we can produce 20, 30, 40 pairs of hinges quickly and efficiently. People that are doing an entire kitchen remodel might not be willing to pay $100 a hinge, but they're more likely to be willing to pay $30 or $40 a pair for a hinge like this that still has a lot of hand forged character. The blanks I'm using actually come from Stony Point Forge. He offers these in a variety of different shapes and sizes. I do some forging on these after they're assembled so that they don't look just like they came from the store and they look more hand forged. He also sells the tools that I will use to produce the hinge. And that is a jig for setting up the bend and the die that goes under the fly press. The first thing we want to do is start bending the, the tabs that will become the eye of the hinge. And to do that, we set it in this little holder that goes in the vise. It has a nice radius at the top of it. And we just start working these over the top. And that's really all you need to do, and that just gets them started to, to roll. You do that with both halves. And by having this radius on there, it makes it start as a nice even bend. If you just try to bend this in the edge of the vise, you're going to end up with a kink. Next thing we'll do is we'll put these in this form and we'll push them down on the fly press. Now it helps to put a little bit of oil in the slot. I oil it about every third or fourth hinge. Not too much, it gets kind of slimy if you do too much. And then just a good push. If you can do it in one push, that's great. But if it takes a couple, that's okay. Now these ne almost never come out of the die. They're a tight fit in there, which is one of the reasons you put some oil. That makes it a little easier. I just have a really big knockout punch. You can just use a piece of round bar or a bolt, whatever. Whatever you have that fits loosely in there. And you can just drive that through. Then it comes out a lot easier. And there we have a very nicely formed hinge eye. So I'll put the other half in the, the same block. The block is wide enough to hold these. and put it in the fly press. And that's really all there is to it. This is a number six fly press, so it's about six tons. A number five would do this. A smaller fly press probably wouldn't do the eighth inch thick hinges, but it would do the thinner hinges. There are some 16 gauge hinges that he also sells. Makes a much smaller, much more delicate hinge. But they're also a lot easier to do, and we'll do a couple of those in just a minute. And just like we did before, we'll tap that out with a punch. And that gives us our other piece, which just happens to match with this pretty nicely in most cases. And this makes a quarter inch eye. So a piece of quarter inch round bar is all you need for the pin. And they usually do this sitting on the anvil, but since we're already set up at the vise here,
So the pin just sticks out just enough that we can upset the end some so it doesn't come apart. Now sometimes you're going to need to heat these to work them. Now this one's a real tight fit so it's going to need to be heated up to open it up, work it around, but it doesn't take much to get it to work really smoothly and eventually they work just fine like this. So here's a pair of hinges that are ready for some hot work, but let's do some smaller hinges. Let's go ahead and do a pair of these little ones as well and that way we'll have two different pairs of hinges. He has this little starting form for these as well. These are much easier, much lighter. Then they have their own special little block. Remember to put just a drop of oil in there. Now this one you want to make sure you're kind of gentle with. Really easy to bend these. Once you feel some resistance, it's probably done. That's the first piece. Second piece just looks exactly the same. So you could do these smaller hinges under a much smaller fly press. I'm not sure what the li limit is. I've never worked under the real small fly presses. So there is that little hinge. Now for the hinge pins on these little hinges, I use a piece of eighth inch welding rod. It's a nice precise size, easy to come by. Get the hacksaw to start right. Then I'll take that to the grinder real quick and just put a little bit of a bevel on there so it slides into the hinge easier. These little delicate pins are easy to bend so if there's too much resistance, you might have to run a drill bit through there. And that one's seeming like that might be a possibility. So I just run an exact size drill bit through there. And that should make it fit just fine. And if you're doing that, you might as well do both pieces. It starts in much easier this time. When you get to the bottom, your pin isn't going to go all the way through because it's a little bit long, so you might have to hang it off the edge and just barely trap it there. These little pins, I'm just going to do cold. Just a little tap, tap, tap on the end to upset it some. Look for any oddities here, and you can get this to all line up if something's a little bit wonky there but then again it's not a real big deal if these don't quite open yet and oftentimes you do have to do a little fussing with them hot although you can usually get them to open cold if you just stick a screwdriver or a chisel in there
I'm going to upset the ends of the hinge pins on the larger hinges, but I'll heat them up with a torch because it makes it a little easier. It doesn't take long to get that hot. It will cool off some when I go put the torch back on its holder. An assistant to hand the torch off to here would be nice. Do a little on one end, then we'll do the other end. Just round the ends over a little bit. Just don't want any sharp edges on the tops of those pins. Now this can go in the forge. It's me, I'm back from the future to tell you Oops. The entire next segment of this video was shot with a little microphone in my pocket because I put it there while I put my apron on and then I forgot to clip it to the apron. So this may be a chance for some voiceover, for some muffled audio, and for those of you who don't like the music, I apologize, but there'll probably be some music over this because the audio that I recorded isn't going to be very good. Well, the audio quality is every bit as bad as I was afraid it was going to be. The first thing I'm going to do to these hinges is just heat them and open them up and get the hinge joint running a little bit more smoothly. They don't need to be super hot for this, just hot enough to expand a little bit and kind of work themselves in. The chisel is a good way to open that. Then I'm going to use a cross peen and draw out the corners a little bit on the edges and once that's done then I want to thin the far edge of the hinge just a little bit. Old butterfly hinges tended to taper quite a bit and that really does make them look a lot better and adds a little bit of texture. Finally I'm going to bevel the edges and we're just going to continue to do that all the way around until we've done all of the leaves of all of the hinges. So the rest of it pretty much just looks the same as this.
Well, I do truly apologize for the sound issues during the last half of the video. I know that people like me to narrate most of this, but hopefully you got a good idea of exactly what the procedure was. And we should have had good narration through the fly press portion. And that was really mainly what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how to use these little dies that I got from Stony Point Forge. I've made dies like this before. The first place I saw one was in Donald Streeter's book, Professional Smithing. Excellent book if you can round up a copy. But the ones I had made were nowhere near as precise. They didn't run as smooth. The eyes weren't as nice as these are. And the ones that Stony Point Forge makes really do make nice hinges. And the blanks that he sells are made just to go with these dies so they work perfectly together. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you hadn't done so already, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one. If you would like to provide financial support for the videos of Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. These are merely donations, the content is free, and will remain free. Thank you.